Let me read to you a passage from the 14th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 23 to 29. It's the Gospel for the sixth Sunday of Easter, year C. St. John writes, Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am still with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. That's from John chapter 14, verse 23 to 29. It suggests thoughts about the Holy Trinity. There have been philosophies which regard God as very distant from man. I could mention deism, and say in the worst sense Marxism. For the once Jewish Karl Marx, God is not only a figment of the imagination, but to be looking to him just distracts us from our work in the world. Marx maintained that faith in God is just an opiate of the people, a distant pie in the sky, a distant mirage. If we turn to the religions of man, one of the things that distinguishes them one from another is their notion of God's distance from man. It is often said that Islam has an image of God that is strongly marked by transcendence. Islam insists that the one God is beyond all and above everything. Now he is indeed, but this can be stressed in ways that distort the reality. For Benedict XVI once made the passing remark, made with genuine respect, that the Islamic account of God's transcendence can seem to have God so transcending even rationality as to disregard and contradict it in practice, if not in theory. Classic Calvinism stressed the sovereignty of God, which is an aspect of his transcendence, but did so in certain ways which the Catholic Church would not allow. Whatever about these different accounts, let us make a further, if different, point. There is no doubt that for very many people, God is not only beyond, but distant from their life. Now, of course, the fact is that God is indeed a long way off in that he utterly transcends the world in the nature of his being and in the mystery of his plan. But this must be balanced by other aspects of the divine nature. Because he is the creator, he does indeed transcend all. But at the same time, precisely because he is the creator, he is imminent to all, sustaining the slightest particle of reality by the touch, as it were, of his hand. What God has actually revealed to us in Christ about his closeness to us is so breathtaking that we can fail to realize it. This lack of realization could be said to be the most serious and common failure of our everyday faith. We shall only realize it if we think about it persistently, advert to it often, and pray for the faith to accept what Christ has said about it. God is not only intimately near to us in virtue of his constant gift to us of our being, our existence, but he abides within us in his full triune reality if we are in his grace and friendship. What does our Lord say about this? Whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. 
the three divine persons will dwell within us. If for love of Jesus we accept the truth of his word and keep it in our everyday life, observing his commandments for love of him, then both he and the Father will come to us and make their home within us. This they will do by the power of the Holy Spirit who comes to us at our baptism. Our heart will be like the heavens above in that it will be the abode of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. For what is heaven if not where God dwells in all his glory, together with the angels and saints adoring and thanking him? It is where God is. Our Lord assures us that he and the Father and the Holy Spirit will abide within the one who keeps his word. It will all depend on our being in the state of grace, which is to say, in the friendship of Christ due to the grace of the Holy Spirit. In effect, this means that the home which is our heart and soul is embraced by God the Most Holy Trinity himself and transformed into his own royal mansion. At our baptism, he comes to abide. We can choose to reject God's presence by deliberate mortal sin or make it difficult and unwelcoming by unrepeated venial, unrepented, unrepented venial sins. The great good news is that by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord, we have the privilege of the indwelling of the Blessed Trinity in our hearts and souls. God is indescribably near to the Christian soul, not just by reason of his constant creative activity, but as his living guest. All this is made possible by the power and action of the Holy Spirit. The Father and the Son sent him at Pentecost to bring the church to birth and to sustain the church in her mission to the world. It was the Holy Spirit coming to the infant church who transformed the body of Christ's disciples into a great temple of God the Holy Trinity. At our baptism, each of us become members of this church and dwelling places of the Holy Trinity. It is he who in and through his, the church, his creation, brings the blessed Trinity to mankind and to each of us who are disciples of Christ and members of his church. He brings the church to the four corners of the earth precisely in order to bring God the most holy Trinity to abide in the hearts of all men. Let us resolve to enlighten our, to enliven our faith in this stunning mystery, which is that if we live according to Christ's word, he and the Father and the Holy Spirit will constantly dwell within us to sanctify us. Let us not take this for granted, nor with a shrug of the shoulders live our lives as, as if it were not a reality. Our temptation will be precisely to do this.